This is community dinner number 100 and something for me. And we have a pretty standard routine that we go through. People come in, they sit at tables, we serve some meatballs, we have a conversation. And that's the way that these things go. And when we found out that more people were coming, we scratched that and we moved to the auditorium. And by the time I got here, the auditorium was filled up. And uh, I spoke to the group inside in the auditorium for a while, but I was well aware that you guys are out here as well. I just can't be in two places at the same time. So we've closed up inside and come out here. And I just want you to know, I apologize for the confusion and for the logistics of this. We have a way that we do this and it just got kind of overwhelmed by all of you. So again, my apologies, but thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for what you are doing. It's important, I think, to know that this isn't just happening here in Rhode Island. I was on the phone with uh, Chuck Schumer earlier this afternoon, and uh, he was with a crowd of 100,000 people. So, What's your so thank you. And uh, what we ordinarily do. Take questions. So what's the strategy? Yes. You have to take questions. Do you get it? Yes. What's the party's strategy? All right. Let me uh, first with the party strategy. We obviously don't control the White House. We obviously don't control the House of Representatives, which is driven very much by the Speaker. And we don't control the Senate except through what a parliamentary minority can do. And so we are prepared to use our filibuster wherever we can hold 41 senators so that it is actually effective. First place where we are going to make sure that we hold, and I'm confident that we can, is to make sure that we do not support or accommodate or work with any effort to repeal Obamacare. Legal Our... I, I, the uh, public option actually is something that I've just filed again. So with any luck, when we have this conversation, we can put a public option back in. But the position that the Republicans are in is that they can't agree on anything. And so we need to stand fast, not budge, make sure that they ultimately end up failing at trying to do repeal and replace. And then they have to come back to us. And then our conversation is... You throw in the towel on repeal, and we'll work with you to improve Obamacare if you want. Why did I vote for Pompeo? As I said inside, I think that uh, there are a lot of you who may disagree with me on this, and I appreciate it. Sometimes I feel like I'm pretty confident. Sometimes you have to make a judgment call. You're entitled to my reasoning. My reasoning is this. There was a moment in the Armed Services Committee when the Republican witness, not our Democratic witness, the Republican witness, who had been an official in the George W. Bush administration testified that we needed to clear General Mattis in order to protect against, and these are his words, wildly stupid, dangerous, and illegal decisions by the Trump White House. The one place where a president is most empowered and has the least congressional restriction and the least judicial restriction 
is in deploying the military. The president doesn't need congressional approval to send bombers. The con president doesn't need congressional approval to launch missiles. And I believed, and I actually still believe, although I, again, with consciousness that you may be right and I may be wrong, that building a cordon of experienced people in the key national security positions who could push back and say no if the president tried to do something far more horrific than he has done so far. So that's the reason. There are no qualifications. No good. I hope you keep saying no. No good.